Hey, it's Angela Walters from Quilting Is My Therapy, and I'm recording this video from another country. That's right, let's see if you can guess where it is I'm at. That's right, I'm at the Neighbors to the North, Canada. I've been here teaching long arm classes at the Sparrow Quilt Company, and it's been a lot of fun getting to actually teach on long arms. So I've taught classes, done a lecture, and maybe did a little shopping, but I can't help it. I love buying thread. So now I'm recording from my headquarters, in Edmonton. That's right, it's the Holiday Inn Express. See, there's the corner office over there, holds all my clothes, and then there's my office right here where I get all my work done. Now that I'm finished up here in Edmonton, I'm getting ready to head to Toronto, and I'm taking videos so that I can share with you what's going on, but I thought it would be fun to give you a glimpse into what I was doing just a couple weeks ago. I was teaching at the Kansas City Regional Quilt Festival, and if there's one thing I love more than quilting, it's teaching quilting. So just in case you're wondering what goes on inside a quilting class, this video will give you a little peek as to what I teach in my classes. In it, I'm showing you how to quilt the square spiral. Now that's a great design that works for squares of any size. So I'm gonna jump right to it and then maybe even demonstrate it for you at the end of the video. So when I'm looking at a quilt or when I'm trying to decide what to do, sometimes I get what's called quilter's amnesia. You ever had that? Where you sit at a quilt and you're like, I forgot every design I've ever learned, ever. Right? That's different than the quilter's amnesia that happens when you go into a quilt shop and forget that, how much fabric you already have at home. <laughs> that one is not curable, okay? But the first one is. <laughs> so the thing is, sometimes it's harder to decide what to quilt on your quilt than it is to actually quilt it. Sometimes, not every time. This design is something that's really going to draw your attention, right? It has that kind of swirl, it kind of pulls your eye to the center. So this is going to be something I quilt in a quilt block that I want to draw attention to. So if it's my least favorite fabric in the quilt, I'm probably not going to use this design. But if it's an area that I really want to draw attention to, really want to pull the eye in, this is what I'm going to use. There's also going to be something I'm going to put in a larger block. So I'm not going to try to fit it in a really tiny area. First we're going to start with our square. and This is our block. It's representing our, our beautiful, well-pieced area that we want to highlight. Since I'm starting on the outside, I'm going to pick a corner to start from, and I'm going to choose a direction or a way that I want to work my way around that block. This is going to help me as I'm quilting because it's not the first line that's the hardest, right? It's the second, third, fourth, and fifth one that get difficult, and that's going to help keep me from getting stuck. So I like to go clockwise. You could go counterclockwise if you want to be a rebel. That's fine. I'm going to look at the next corner in the direction that I'm heading. So if I'm going clockwise, and then I'm going to look past it, on past that corner, about an inch or half inch or so. Now the spacing that you have here will determine how dense your design is. So if you really love the person that you're quilting this for, you could do like a quarter of an inch. If you love them but they're not quilt worthy, you could do like an inch, right? <laughs> so any of these designs you can do based on your preferences, how much quilting you want to put in it. And all I'm going to do is quilt from here to there. And if you miss the point, like I did there, you're going to need to rip it out and start over. <laughs> just kidding. I will never say that. It doesn't matter if the spacing is perfectly the same. We just want it within a range and it will look good. All right, so I'm going to stop as soon as I touch the edge of my block and then I'm going to do it again. I'm going to go clockwise to my next corner, look past it about an inch or so, and then quilt a straight line to that. And then repeat on the next one. So far so good, right? Hopefully, good. So let's pause for a second before we get into the design and let's talk about quilting those straight lines with your free motion quilting foot. If you're working on your sewing machine, you can definitely use your walking foot for that. The problem is you're gonna be turning that quilt a lot. So if this is a smaller quilt or I have a really big space, you could do that. But on a bigger quilt, that's gonna be a pain to constantly rotate it. You'll get about three turns in and then I'll, you'll be cussing me in your head and my ears will start burning. It's just, it's always, always awkward when I have those moments. The thing is, we're going for straight-ish. So if you're quilting these straight-ish lines with your free motion quilting foot, I would rather have the line smooth than have it land at the perfect spot. What that means is if I'm quilting my line, Instead of correcting myself where I need to go, that's obviously an extreme example, but instead of correcting it, I'm gonna keep it nice and smooth. I, I wanna try for that. 
But for those of you that work on a long arm, since these lines are diagonal, I'm using a ruler for them because I can't quilt a diagonal line without a ruler of any length. It looks like a drunk monkey did it. And so with a ruler, it looks just like a monkey did it. So that's good. All right, next corner. But this time when I go past it, it's gonna be on that previously quilted line. And I'm gonna quilt to it and then stop when I'm touching. None of the lines in this design cross each other. So if you're stuck, you're not sure where to go, just know you need to stop when you hit a line. Okay, sometimes that helps. And then next corner, and then on past it, going to that point. Basically, it's that same step repeated over and over and over again. If you get stuck, take a moment and just use your finger to approximate the next couple steps. That's gonna help you see if you're gonna end up in the right place or not. So if I'm right here, I'm not sure where to go. I'm thinking, man, Angela made that look so easy. Well, I practiced in the car on the way over here, which was awkward because I was driving <laughs> and Carolyn was freaking out because she thought I was gonna wreck. No, <laughs> I'm gonna take my finger and think, okay, do I need to go this way? Well, then where would I, no, maybe I need to go this way. Okay, that's the way I wanna go. You don't have to do it without stopping. You know, sometimes I see quilters, and I'm guilty of this too. I'm quilting and I'm like, I don't know where I'm going, but I'm going to keep going. I'm not going to stop. So what I'm going to do is keep working my way into the center. And what's great is they're going to start getting smaller and smaller. And that makes them a little bit easier when you're working on your machine, your sewing machine. Now, what's great about this design is you can stop when you say it's done, right? It's like, I'm finished with this. I'm done. Or you can work your way into the center. And what I like to do, you don't have to do this, but when I stop, I decide this is the last line I want to do, I'm going to quilt a line directly across to the other side, and that just gives me a triangle in the center. So let's pretend I wanted to add one more line, and now I'm thinking I'm done. Then I can quilt a line directly across to the opposite corner. And that just, I think it just makes it look like it's kind of finished up and closed up. Okay? So that's the design in a nutshell. Any questions about it? So what did you think? Doesn't that look kind of fun? Well, it just so happens that right before I left, I took a quick video of me actually quilting it on my long arm, and I'd like to show you how I did it now. Now, just like I said in the class, I'm working my way around this block, looking to the next corner and on past it, and quilting my diagonal line. One question I'm asked a lot is if I use rulers when I'm working on my long arm machine. Now for straight, vertical, or horizontal lines, I can usually freehand those okay. But for these diagonal lines of any length, I have to use a ruler to do them. Even though I'm using a nice, long, straight ruler, I want to point out that I'm keeping the quilting or the needle in between my fingertips. That's where I'm going to have the most control. What I don't want to do is have my needle at one end of the ruler and my hands at the other end. Nothing good comes from that. Now, if you've never used a ruler before on your long arm, this is a design to work on because it makes you go in all different directions. Now, I know the first time you use a ruler, it might feel a little weird, but I promise after a while, you'll be whipping it around like a ninja star or something. Okay, if you're going to try this out on your long arm and you're going to use a ruler, you have to have a ruler base. What that ruler base does is give me a nice flat surface. If I don't have one, I might take a chunk out of my ruler and then it breaks the needle, breaks the ruler, and then I pee my pants. And none of that is good. In fact, I may have a couple of rulers laying around that I've strategically broken so that people can see what happens without a ruler base. And by strategically broken, I mean I have just been quilting too fast and broke them on accident. As you can see, this design looks great. It's intricate looking with no marking and really easy to put together. It's basically just the same step repeated over and over and over again. So the next time you're working on those quilts with a big block, go ahead and try this design. And if you want more machine quilting tips and tricks, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel down there or leave a comment letting me know what you'd like to see in a future episode. I'm heading to bed because I have to get up early tomorrow to head to Toronto. So have a great night and happy quilting.